Hi, my name's Joe Mills. I work for The Open University and I'm a member of the T150 course team. Part of my responsibilities working for The Open University is dealing with a lot of audio and visual material. For instance, one of my duties is looking after this wonderful studio facility that we have here. Uh, another of my duties is recording audio and visual material for certain courses, specifically in the technology-related areas. Uh, one example of this is the interviews and other audio recordings that I've done for T150. In this particular video, I've been asked to demonstrate some basic recording techniques, including things like mic placement and mic choice. And I hope that these are beneficial to you in your course and in your further studies. So the first thing that we're going to look at today is the issue of microphone choice. In any given audio recording scenario, you may have a selection of microphones from which you can call upon. Some of these may be more expensive than others, some may simply be more appropriate or more convenient for the particular situation. What we've done here is we've arranged a typical video interview scenario. This is something that we've used quite a lot on many different courses for capturing video interviews with people. What we have is a standard camera taking the video recording, and on top of that, we have an external audio recorder capturing the audio. The external audio recorder has internal microphones, although they are mounted externally. It also has capacity to receive the signal from two external microphones. The external microphone sockets are located around the back, and it's these that we're currently using and that you're currently hearing. So the first thing that I'm going to demonstrate is the difference between the external microphones that we're using, one of which is mounted just out of shot up here, and the internal microphones on the audio recorder. And I'm going to ask our cameraman, Brendan, to now switch to the internal microphones. Okay, so you now should be hearing that the sound has changed. You may be getting a little bit more of the room echo you may also be getting some background noise, and it generally perhaps doesn't sound quite so intimate and clear. So I'm now going to ask Brendan to switch back to the external microphones. So you should now be able to appreciate that the external microphone is giving us a much higher quality of audio recording. The main reason for this is that it's located much closer to me, to my face and my voice, whereas the internal microphones are much, much further away. They're perhaps two metres away. This is an important lesson. Getting the microphone as close as possible to the person that you're recording is essential for good quality audio. The next thing that I want to demonstrate to you is one of the other major problems that I have when recording audio or video interviews or doing voiceovers, and that is the issue of popping. To demonstrate popping to you, I've brought along my condenser microphone that I use for most interviews and voiceover situations. It's a very high quality microphone, but it still suffers from the problem of popping. To demonstrate this problem to you, I'm going to position the microphone about 10 to 15 centimeters away from my face, which is a comfortable distance for this mic, and I'm going to repeat the word pop. Pop, pop, pop. You should be able to appreciate that the microphone cannot cope with the P in pop. Is there anything that I can do about this problem? Well, there are several different options, and the first and simplest is if your microphone has come with a foam cap for the end. I can use this foam cap and place it over the microphone, like so, and if I now repeat the word pop, you should be able to appreciate that the effect has been somewhat reduced. Pop, pop, pop. So that's been pretty effective. But what if I don't have a foam end? Some microphones don't come with them and some you can't use them with. Well, there are commercial filters available called pop filters and I've brought one of these along here. The commercial pop filter is a fairly simple structure. It's a piece of material suspended within a frame on normally a flexible arm with a mount. What you do with this filter is you position it between your mouth and the microphone. So to give you a demonstration, 
I'll position the microphone again 10 to 15 centimeters from my face and repeat the word pop. Pop, pop, pop. Now I'll insert the pop filter. Pop, pop, pop. This should have proven an even more effective way of getting rid of the peas in pop. It's a great solution. The next thing that I want to take a little look at is the issue of microphone placement with respect to audio or video interviews or voiceovers. What I've done here is I've put my condenser microphone on the table in front of me. This is fairly common for some interviewers, especially radio interviews, to do this. There are a couple of problems with this, however. The first one being the lack of gain because the microphone is so far away from me. In order to combat this, you would have to raise the volume in the editing, and that would naturally raise the background noise as well. One of the other problems here is called contact noise. Contact noise is when I make contact with the table, the microphone is in contact with the table, and the noise that I make is all picked up by the microphone, and that can be very annoying and it's not particularly professional at all. The second thing that we can do to combat that is to pick the microphone up and hold it by hand. Doing this I can get the microphone a lot closer to my face and that helps to increase the audio gain and the quality. The only problem with this is the fact that during the course of holding it I may wish to move the microphone around and in that situation a lot of noise from my hands moving around will be picked up and again that's not very professional. The best way, and the most professional way, around this problem is to use a microphone stand. And I have a tabletop microphone stand here. So here is the tabletop microphone stand. It's got a heavy base with a central support column and the microphone clip on the top. And it's into this that I'm going to clip my microphone. Having positioned the microphone onto the stand, I can then move it wherever I choose. Directly in front is a really good choice if the person that you're interviewing is not familiar with using a microphone. However, a much more professional position is the choice of a 45 degree angle to the forward facing position. This helps to limit issues such as pop and is much more common. Additionally, if you're sat opposite the person you're interviewing, this gives you a clear line of sight to them and helps you to communicate much better. So one final area that you might want to consider when placing microphones is if you're interested in recording music as well. Uh, this is only one brief example of how mic placement can change the sound of a recording, but you can experiment on any instrument of your choosing. The world's your oyster, literally, with mic placement, and it's a real skill and art to choose the right mic placement. I'm going to be playing a bass guitar here, and I've got my microphone set up facing and pointing at the cone of the speaker in my speaker cabinet. Uh, the first recording I'm going to do is in this position, and then we're going to angle the microphone up slightly so that it points towards the edge of the speaker, and we'll see what the difference is. Great, so that's the first recording done. Uh, let's have a look at moving the microphone position and see what effect that has. So that's the two recordings done. You'll have to play them back again and again to see if you can hear any difference. What you should be able to hear is that the first recording should sound brighter. There should be more high frequencies there. The second recording should have lower frequencies. And that's just a simple demonstration of how positioning the microphone and angling the microphone differently can create a different sound. It's the skill of a sound engineer to know exactly where to place a microphone. But you can learn and you can experiment on your way. I hope that this tutorial has been of some help to you.